Okay, let's talk about adding fractions. So we're going to uh, focus in on this one specific problem in this particular video. We have 11 twelfths plus 2 fifths. So the question is, how do you add these two fractions? If you know how to do this problem, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. But I would say the majority of you, maybe like 90% of you at least, are going to do this particular problem using one technique. Let's call it one way. And that is the good way. That's the way your teacher taught you. Uh, and you're going to take that particular approach. So that's a good approach, and you need to know this way. You'll know exactly what I'm talking about here because I'm going to show you this uh, uh, particular uh, method. But there is another way. There's actually two ways you can approach this problem. And this second way that a lot of you haven't seen, you're going to be amazed at how easy it is to, uh, to add and subtract fractions. Matter of fact, this uh, particular method is so awesome that if you haven't seen it, you're definitely going to walk away from this video with a happy face, and your hair might even stand up being like, wow, this was uh, awesome. Uh, but here's the deal. Uh, when you see this second way of adding and subtracting fractions, just don't forget the way you were taught. You need to know both of these techniques. So I'm going to get into all this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And I'm telling you right now, you can be successful in mathematics. But what it's going to take is great math instruction. You need access to great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you're at the middle school, high school, or even college level in terms of mathematics, Check out my math help program. You can find a link to it in the description of this video. I promise it will help you out big time. Now, if you happen to be preparing for a test with some sort of math or math section on it, things like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, Teacher Certification Exam, Alex, uh, AccuPlacer, CLEP Exam, there's so many tests out there that have um, uh, math on it. A lot of you are going to be taking uh, these type of exams. You don't even realize it. But anyways, I have a ton of test uh, prep courses that can help you prepare and pass those exams. If you homeschool, check out my homeschool program for middle and high school mathematics. Super proud of this. Uh, definitely have a lot of awards and great reviews. So check that out if you homeschool. Now, if you need a pair of math notes, hopefully uh, you have your own. Okay, But if you do not, you need to start taking uh, notes and then start making your notes as awesome as possible. This is so important uh, to learn mathematics. But in the meantime, you can use my notes to study from. I'll leave links in the description of this video uh, to my math notes. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem. I'm going to show you the answer right now. If you want to uh, pause the video and work on it for a second, I'm going to do that. But I'm going to show you the answer right now. Okay, so there you go. Uh, 11 twelfths plus 2 fifths is equal to 79 over 60. And if you got that right, well, let me go ahead and give you a nice little happy face and A plus and a 100%. Matter of fact, I will give you multiple stars so you can have an extra special day. Great job. But here's the deal, okay? I just want to comment real quick on the answer. So notice that our numerator, which is the top number, is bigger than the denominator. So for example, there's three um, ways you can see fractions. We can have something like this, 3 fifths. We can have something like uh, 4 thirds. And you can have something like, say, 1 and 1 third. So anytime the numerator is smaller than the bottom number, uh, this is called the denominator, this is what we call a proper fraction. But when we have a situation where the numerator, that top number, is bigger than uh, the denominator, this is called an improper fraction. And you can convert improper fractions into what we call mixed number fractions. Okay, the way you do that, you just simply divide. So if we wanted to uh, take four thirds and turn it into uh, an improper, I'm sorry, a mixed number, we just take three and divide it into uh, four. So three goes into four, one. One times three, that's three. We have a uh, remainder one, so that would be one and one third. So uh, here is um, a real important piece of advice for those of you that are um, dealing with fractions in school, okay? Do not take your improper fractions and every single answer and turn them into mixed numbers. Okay, don't do that. What you want to do is to make sure that your answer here is fully reduced. Okay, that's always important. But don't take this and feel compelled to turn it into a mixed number. Only do that if you're asked to do that by your teacher because I've seen a ton of students who have the right answer as an improper um, fraction and then they go turn that into a mixed number and make a mistake, turn that answer in, and then guess what happens? There is a lot of sad faces, which I don't like to see 
as a math teacher. They're just like, listen, I had the right answer. Can you please, please give me credit? And for me, I'm such a nice guy. I usually give them most of the credit. I might give them like 9 out of 10. So if you were in my math class, you know, I tell you right now, uh, it wouldn't be too difficult to get a good grade if you were trying and paying attention to what I was teaching you. But listen, you got to listen to the advice of others. So anyways, to remember this, put that into your notes. This will help you out in your math class. But anyways, here's the right answer. Let's go ahead and, and uh, talk about the way that most of you uh, did this problem. All right, so here is the problem. 11 twelfths plus 2 fifths. So when we're trying to add fractions, we're looking at the denominators. This is the way most of us were taught. We're like, okay, I'm looking at the denominators, and you're thinking to yourself, wait, I got a problem here. I can't really do this. Well, yes, you have a, a situation we're going to have to resolve in order to add these fractions. So let's look at a, an easy example. Let's say I gave you the problem one-fifth plus two-fifths. Okay, now what do you do when you're trying to add or subtract fractions? We first look at the denominators, and we look at them. And what are we asking ourselves? We're saying, are these numbers the same? Okay. Well, if the denominators are the same, then the problem is super easy because all we have to do when we're adding fractions, if the denominator is the same, is we keep that same denominator and we simply add the numerators. In this case, it's 1 and 2. So we have 1 plus 2, which, of course, is 3. So we write that as 3 over 5 or 3 fifths. So that's how we add and subtract fractions. If the denominators are the same, we simply go ahead and add or subtract the respective numerators. So most of us know that, but in this case, we're looking at these denominators, and they are not the same. So what do we do? Well, this is what we do. This is what uh, you were taught way back in the good old days. For me, that was like the 1970s. That was so awesome to go back to school back in those days. But anyways, what we have to do is find a common denominator. We need to find a denominator. Okay, this is a denominator, and this is a denominator. We need to find a denominator that these two denominators have in common. Okay, well, they have a lot of de denominators in common. We want to find that lowest uh, denominator they have in common. That's referred to as the lowest common denominator. So finding the LCD is a whole discussion in and of itself. I have a lot of additional videos on uh, fractions in my YouTube channel. Uh, you dedicated on how to find an LCD, but if you really want to learn this stuff uh, above and beyond this, uh, in my math uh, program, I have two courses on uh, basic mathematics. Uh, Pre-algebra would be a great course for those of you at that level or my Math Foundations course. I cover all this stuff. But anyways, you have to know how to find the LCD. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to find the lowest common denominator between 12 and 5. Okay. Now, I would say a good amount of you are going to get the correct answer. All right. Now, this is, pretty, this is a pretty easy problem. Uh, but I want to um, ask you, how did you uh, calculate that? Okay. Like, what did you do? So some of you are like, well, I don't know quite sure how I did it. I just got the answer. Well, what if um, our denominators were something like this? What if you had like 128 plus, I don't know, 306? Now, this problem right here, these denominators to find LCD would be quite challenging. Matter of fact, a lot of you would be like, you know, looking at me like this. I'm like, hey, I'm not going to do your dumb math problem. Mr. YouTube math man, go away. Just give me these easy problems. Well, listen, you got to know how to deal with these denominators as well. So anyways, make sure you understand how to find the LCD. Again, I have additional uh, videos on this, but anyways, I'm going to show you the answer and let's see if you got this right. Okay, so the LCD is 16. If you got that right, very, very good. I'll give you a little happy face and a check mark. So that is the lowest common denominator. So what does that mean? Well, it means that we have to rewrite these fractions such that the denominators, we have to change these denominators such that they're 60. Okay, so we're going to have to rewrite this fraction. Okay, such that its denominator is 60. And we're going to have to rewrite this fraction such that its denominator is 60. So we're like, what do you mean rewrite? Well, I can rewrite any fraction. Let's say you have the fraction 1 half. Let's say you're like, well, how can I rewrite that? Well, just make a fraction that's equivalent to 1 half. So you can just say like 3 over 6, 5 over 10. These two fractions are mathematically the same, but this one has a denominator 6. This has a denominator 2. So you get the idea. We can rewrite fractions. Uh, but we're not breaking them uh, in terms of changing their value. We're just going to change the denominator. But in order to change the denominator, we're going to have to change the numerator. So if we want to change this, we're also going to have to change that top number. So let's go ahead and talk about how we do that right now. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and change our denominators to 60. So let's take our first fraction. Remember, it's 11 over 12, 11 twelfths. So how do I uh, change this 12 into a 60? Well, I just multiply by 5. Okay, if I take a 5 and I multiply by that 12, I come up with a 60. So if I multiply the denominator by 5, I have to multiply the numerator by 5. So that's 5 times 11, which is 55. So this is how we rewrite fractions to get a particular denominator that we want. Okay, so let's go ahead and change this uh, fraction, 2 fifths, uh, such that its denominator is 60. So how, do, how can I do that? Well, just take a 12 and multiply by that 5. Okay, of course, that would be 60 there. And if I multiply the denominator by 12, I have to multiply the numerator by 12. So 12 times 2 is 24. Okay, so what I did is rewrite these respective fractions such that they now have a common denominator, and as a matter of fact, it's the lowest denominator they could have in common called the lowest common denominator. And of course, now we know what to do. We have the same denominator, so we're simply going to just add the numerators. Okay, so let's go ahead and show that right now. All right, so 60 and 60, so 55 plus 24, again, same denominator. We'll put the denominator there. We're going to add the numerators, so that's 55 plus 24 is 79 over 60, and there you go. Again, this is what you, um, probably the majority of you were taught in elementary school, middle school, whatever the case was, and this is excellent. You need to know this, all right? This is uh, uh, basic mathematics, so critical that you know how to handle uh, fractions, so this is a technique that you need to know and understand. So I'm going to show you another awesome way, kind of a shortcut way. This is one of my favorite little techniques to uh, show students, and I'm surprised at how many students don't know this. Now, I'm going to show you this technique. What I want you to do is to remember it and use it, but don't you um, use it as an excuse to forget um, how to uh, work with fractions in terms with uh, finding the LCD, etc. So let's go ahead and show you this second technique. And I love to uh, show this technique. I refer to it as the bow tie method. So let's uh, draw a little stick figure right here. What's a bow tie? Well, well, it's these little ties like that. Now, if you're wondering if I wear bow ties, I do not wear bow ties, okay? As a matter of fact, I don't wear much, many ties uh, that, uh, uh, that much on special occasions. But anyways, that is a bow tie. And um, this little shape right here, this bow right there is kind of how I kind of refer to the pattern that we're going to take. Let me show you the pattern and I'll explain this right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this bottom uh, number right here. Okay, it's it's very, very specific, uh, very specific pattern. You take this bottom uh, denominator, bottom right, and you're going to multiply it this way. Okay, so that's step one. Not this way, not this way, very specifically. Starting from the bottom right, we're going to multiply diagonally, so it's going to be 5 times 11, and there you go. There's 5 times 11 right there. Now, this is an addition problem, so the next step is you're going to multiply this way. Okay, from bottom left, upward in this diagonal, so that's 12 times 2. All right, so we're going to put our answer right there, and this is an addition problem, so we have an addition between these uh, two products right there. This forms our numerator, all right? So 5 times 11 is going to be right here, plus 12 times 2, going to be right there. This is our numerator. Then we're going to put a fraction bar. And then lastly, our denominator is going to be 12 times 5 right there, okay? So 12 times 5. Let's go ahead and simplify that. So 11 times 5 right here is, of course, 55, plus 12 times 2 is 24. Uh, over 12 times 5, which of course is 60, and look at this, 55 plus 24, that's 79 over 60, it's exactly what we had right there, and it took me all of like, you know, 10 seconds to do. It is so, so easy to use this bow tie method. Now there's one little caveat here, that sometimes uh, the bow tie method will generate a fraction that's not fully simplified. In other words, you might have something like 30 over 50 as your final answer. Just make sure you reduce your final answer to 3 fifths. But I'm telling you right now, you need to know this bow tie method. It comes in super handy, especially in algebra. What if we had an expression like x over y plus w over z? Okay, well, how do I deal with that with algebra? Well, I could just use the bow tie method. I go this times this, so that'll be z times x or xz plus, this is an addition problem, y 
uh, times w, so I'll put that right there, yw over y times z, uh, which of course is yz. There you go, there is the correct answer. So fractions are extremely important in mathematics, and once you learn them, you know, like at the middle school level or uh, elementary school level, and you just continue to practice them, you can't forget them. Be like, oh, I got a calculator. I don't need this stuff. They just become more and more and more important. Okay. So, you know, when you look at a problem like this, just because you can get the right answer, stop and think, do you understand what's really going on? Do you truly understand how to find the lowest common denominator? You know, you know and all these little procedures and kind of algorithms, that's a fancy word for uh, basically the steps you need to take have a tremendous importance later on in algebra and in uh, even more advanced mathematics. So pay attention to the basics. Again, if you need additional help with fractions, I have a ton of videos on my YouTube channel on fractions. And I formally teach this, again, in my two courses, um, my Math Foundations course, which is a great little mini course uh, that goes into basic mathematics in elementary school. I like place value, all that kind of good stuff. So that's a great starter course for those of you who are kind of relearning math and or pre-algebra. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.